Hello again, everybody. This is Joe Larson, and you're watching the Five Off, Five On Racing Show. Tonight's show will probably be the most difficult show I've ever done. We lost a racing hero, but not only was he a racing hero, he was my friend. NASCAR champion Ted Christopher passed away Saturday from a plane crash in Connecticut. He was 59. Christopher was a 2001 NASCAR Wheeling All-American Series national champion. He was a NASCAR Wheeling modified champ in 2008. He's the winningest driver in Connecticut's Stafford Motor Speedway and the Thompson Motorsports Park. He had six starts in the Monster Energy NASCAR Cup Series, 21 Xfinity starts, two Camping World Truck Series starts, 12 wins in NASCAR's k and Pro Series East in 94 starts. He had 42 wins in the NASCAR Wheeling Modified Series over a 29-year career. He had two starts in the Rolex 24 Hours of Daytona, 131 wins at the Stafford Motor Speedway, with nine championships and 99 wins at the Thompson Motorsports Park. He also had 10 titles in the World Series of Asphalt Racing at Florida's New Smyrna. Ted Christopher was the type of guy that you either loved him or you hated him. I was on the other end. He was my friend. And to share a little story about my first interaction with Ted Christopher, I had heard all these stories about Teddy, who was known as TC, how rough he was, how tumbly he was, how he didn't take no nonsense from nobody. And here I am, I'm becoming the race director on the NASCAR Wheel and Modified Tour, and I've come from Long Island. I'm dealing with the Petuchos, the Vigarolas, guys like that. So. How bad could this guy be? Well, they said on the track, he made them guys look like cartoon characters. Well, we were a little shorthanded, and I had to go check some cars, and I go down to the block number 13, and uh, I asked if Teddy's around. I said, no, he's not here yet. He's, uh, his plane didn't land. So I laughed, oh, a plane, the guy takes a plane. Well, <laughs> the funny thing about that is, he did. Well, my first interaction with him, we're all standing around, and. We're talking, I'm teching some cars, and this was another race, and it was right after Martinsville, and, and, with, and they're telling stories, they're all telling stories, and Teddy's just sitting there with that little impish grin, and, he's, and one of the guys goes, you know, you, you can see Teddy in your mirror, you, 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 all of a sudden you're, you're mirror driving, and you're nervous, and you're missing your marks, and this and that, and, I was, and I'm like, oh, why? Oh, he'll bump you, the three tap rule, one tap, I'm here, two, I'm coming, three, you're going, and, and I'm sitting there, he says, Guy, he says, that guy was behind me for 42 laps at Martinsville, and he didn't hit me once. And all of a sudden, the, the group got silent. They're trying to figure out, this guy, he can drive. What, what kind of story is he making? And Teddy looks at him. He goes, yeah, remember? And he goes, what are you talking about? And I said, I drove the pace car. And he says, he can't hit the pace car. He couldn't hit the pace car until he hit it at Riverhead and towed it to Buzz Chew Chevrolet <laughs> at a tour race. But that was Teddy. That was Teddy, and he was one of those guys, you know, he had that reputation. They booed him. He was booed all the time. He could win a race and he'd be booed. He'd drive intros, he'd be booed. But if you knew the Teddy outside of racing, the one I knew, he was a great guy. And a lot of people outside of my little circle, they didn't know that he was going to drive my figure eight car back a few years ago. Um, after Brian Cicella decided to, to go on his own and get his own race car. And 
And <laughs> it's kind of funny, Teddy and I, we talked, and, and the way it came to be is I said, Teddy, you've driven to just about everything there is. He goes, oh, I started in go-karts and blah, 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 and he went down the list. I said, you were driving a figure eight stock car? He goes, no, you guys are crazy. I said, want to drive mine? All right. So we talked about it, and it turned out that we just couldn't connect because, you know, he was flying down to Long Island to run the, the Wayne Anderson modified in, in the weekly racing series there. And the figure eights didn't always run. And it turned out it, that it seemed, looking back, that when the figure eights are racing, we had a tour race. So it never came to be. Can you imagine Teddy Christian in a figure eight car at Riverhead Raceway? We laughed about it. We laughed. And it was, all right, we'll do it next year. We'll try it again. It, it never happened. But, you know, uh, my, my hat's off to, to everybody who's helped Teddy along the ways, the people who crewed him, the guys who owned his car, Eddie Whalen, when he ran the 36 car, um, had success there. Uh, Barry Connell, his crew chief, who I didn't get along with, but when it was all said and done, at the end of the day, we always shook hands, we always walked out laughing. And, and his current car owner, Danny Watts, Danny Watts, I, I, I know Danny a long time, I know his dad a long time, and when his dad raced way back when, and he was driving for Teddy. And, and this past weekend, the, the NASCAR Wheeler Modified Tour was at the Riverhead Raceway on Long Island. And the car was there, the car was registered, the car was teched and all that kind of good stuff. And uh, they withdrew from the worst. Well, they did not start because of the, the situation, the tragic situation. So what the racetrack did, as did Stafford Motor Speedway, Waterford, they did a, a tribute and they had the cars lined up on the racetrack, and, and the, the drivers in front of the cars, the crew chiefs behind it, the officials in the line, and out of the pit gate comes the 82 with Tom Rogers Jr. driving, and they did a little three-lap tribute to Ted Christopher. And, and I'm gonna tell you folks, there was probably not a dry eye in the house, and when the car came around and took the ceremonially, this checkered flag, they were cheering. Everybody was cheering. There wasn't a boo, because there's respect. The racing community is a respect that a lot of people and a lot of other businesses, sports, clubs, groups, activities, a respect in racing that you'll never find anywhere, anywhere. He's on the racetrack. He's beating and banging your guy. I called it hard, good hard racing. But you didn't like him because he was doing that. He's so old school racing, and if, as a young guy, and, I, and, and he was arrogant, and he was cocky, and he, but he backed himself up on the racetrack. And, and I just watched the video over the weekend where he was put to the back, and he had to finish third to win the championship. And I believe it's the water, New London Waterford Speedboat. And watching this video, watch him pick off cars one by one, pushing them out of the way. Not in a way that he's trying to put you in the wall, but just getting you to lift, getting you to move. Get... He did that. That's, that was Teddy Christopher. That was Teddy Christopher. And I'll tell you what, I'm, I'm proud to, to say he was one of my racing buddies. And I don't have a lot of racing buddies, per se, and, and Teddy was one of them. And it was something my, my daughter said to me at, the, at Riverhead Saturday when I was there. My, my, my daughter said, you know, Dad, one of the good things, you know, every time I went to a track and saw Teddy Christopher, He'd always grab me, I was walking by, and he'd say, how's your dad? I haven't talked to him, how's he doing? You know, and and that's, that's a friend. There's 30 or so other competitors that are at these tour races, and, and they don't go up to my kid and say that, but, but Teddy did. You know, and, and, and to move on a little bit, Phil Kurz, he's the president and CEO of Welland Engineering. Him and I communicated a little bit uh, last day or so, and, and Phil wanted to call in and and say some things about Teddy and, and about 20 minutes before the show, um, Phil said to me, uh, I can't do it. I, I, I cannot speak. I, I cannot dial the phone to, to call you and talk about Teddy. So he sent me a, a, a little thing that he wants me to read. And, and again, this is from Phil Kerr's president and CEO of Wheeling Engineering, a title sponsor of the NASCAR Wheeling Modified Tour. He said, on behalf of the Wheeling family and the employees of Wheeling Engineering, I wish to extend our heartfelt condolences to the family and friends of Ted Christopher. Ted was the first driver to display the Whalen logo on a NASCAR race car, and our friendship endured over the years 
with many different racing series. Looking back, I celebrated in victory lane more times with Ted than any other driver. Over the past 23 years, Ted has been a fixture in short track racing and a legend in the modern area. There, are, there is no doubt that his accomplishments will be discussed by many. I will always remember Ted as a hard racer, always up on the wheel and loving to pass as many cars as possible. Aggressive, skillful, calculating, and tough is the Ted I will always remember and miss very much. He was one of a kind. He was TC, the champ. I'm Phil Kurz, president, CEO of Whalen Engineering. And there were so many others, so many others on social media, so many other people sharing their stories and, and their experiences and pictures and photos. And, uh, you know, it's, I, I wish he would have saw this love. We have a little video, I believe, and it was put together by the Racing with Jesus Ministries, who follows not only the touring series, but the weekly racing series as well. Um, and uh, we're going to show this as a quick little video right now. Welcome back. Anyway, uh, the NASCAR Wheel and Modified Tour was at the Long Island Riverhead Raceway this, this past week, and I had the, the uh, pleasure of attending. And uh, before I go over what happened, I want to take this moment to thank Mike Caffi Cappiello of Riverhead Raceway for all his help and assistance this past Saturday night at the raceway, a place that I, that I used to call home, but, but I felt like it, it wasn't home anymore because of whatever, whenever, however. But when I got to the racetrack, and, and there was no place to park for handicapped people. And I'm a handicapped person, as people may or may not know. I had you know, major surgery to reconstruct my right foot. And, I, and I, I'm going to be out of commission for quite some time. Um, you had to see me crawling down the stairs to get to the studio. But anyway, um, when I got there, he picked me up in a golf cart and took me to the sign-in window. He took all my stuff that I had, my cooler, my backpack, whatever I had, and then drove me to my daughter's boyfriend's trailer where I was gonna spend most of the evening on the golf cart and told me if I needed him, have somebody get him and he'll take me wherever I need to go. And I had a little scooter that, that, that we brought and I'm not gonna bother, he's got a show to do and he's got work to do, so I, I hopped on my little scooter and I, I'm gonna go sit and watch some of the races now. I'm gonna watch the features. And Mike came up and saw me. He goes, when you call me? Get in and he goes, where are you going? I said, I'm going up here to before I'm gonna watch the races. Uh, he didn't think it was a wise idea for me to stand and watch the races on the corner. So he had them open the gate and take me to, a, to, to the grandstands right behind the start finish line so I could sit and watch the races. 
And when the night was over, he wanted to take me back. And, and I'll tell you what, my, my hat's off to Mike and, and, and the staff at, at the Riverhead Raceway and, and all the officials that, uh, from the racetrack that came up and asked how I was doing and, and some of the teams, um, and, and I thank you for that. Um, well, I got a long road ahead of me with this, this foot and ankle. Um, just real quick, they, they took out all the old hardware. They put new bone where there wasn't. They took some bones out. They put two plates and six screws into my foot. I'll be non-weight bad for 12 weeks. I've knocked off about three of those so far. And then we'll do some PT and I'll have to learn how to use this foot again. Um, it, it's it's going to be fun. And, and Mod Gale, yes it was. It was good to see my old friends, and, and you know what was really even better? The 38 car, the car that I was supposed to drive that NASCAR kind of wouldn't let me, and for whatever reason, I did just about everything they asked, almost everything they asked, and I just figured it was just a, a waste of time. I was going to get a fair shake. Uh, I don't know if I believe that still, but I believed it then. But the 38, which hasn't seen much success over the years, but it was an extra car that Wade Cole and his team brought to the tour races for somebody else to get into. And a local guy last week blows his motor, Kyler Wood, blows his motor, needs, needs something for this race. And to put something together in a day is almost impossible. But somehow or another, Elwood hooked up with Wade, and, and he hops in this car. And, and I got there just after practice. And, 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 I, and I see Linda, the, the, the car owner, over at the board, all excited. And I go over to the, to the team later on, and, and Kyle Woodward was second fastest in practice in the 38 car. And he had an awesome qualifying spot, and he was running in the top five the, just about the entire race and, and finished eighth. Finished eighth in the car that everybody counted out over the years. And that's a strong testament to, to two people. One, the driving ability of Kyle Edward and, and, and what his crew did. And from what I understand, they changed nothing but the tires. But it's also a testament to, to Wade Cole, who's been racing modified since 1972. And to him, it's his golf game. I want to play golf. I'm going to go out and have some fun. And driving it off the, the track and driving it onto that Ram truck, which you, you'd have to see it be done to believe it, as long as he could drive it up there, man, it was a good night. But Saturday was a great night, and, uh, I, and I'm glad I was a part of that. I really am. So anyway, NASCAR Wheel of Modified Tour results, Riverhead Raceway. Timmy Salomino from the pole was the winner, followed by Doug Colby. Kyle Soper, a local Riverhead racer, was third. Ryan Priest was fourth. Justin Bonson, you fifth. C.J. Lehman, a local uh, Riverhead Raceway modified driver, was sixth. Dylan Stoyer. Another Riverhead local, seventh. Kyle Elwood, eighth. Eric Goodale, ninth. And Rob Summers rounding out the top ten. Long Island's taking over again. Long Island used to be the hot bit of racing. It's coming back, trust me. The points, as I say, with three races to go, Ryan Priest is the points leader ahead of Doug Colby by six markers. Timmy Solomino, nine points back. Justin Bonsi, you're 24 points back. And Rowan Pennock, 33 back. Eric Goodale is 47th back. Those are the guys that have a mathematical chance of, of battling for the title. The, the rest of the guys, it would take a miracle. 7th, 8th, 9th, 10th. And that would be Dave Sapienza, who's 7th. Matt Swanson, who is 8th. Matt Zeckham is 9th. And Rob Summers, rounding out the top 10 in points. The next event for the NASCAR Wheel and Modified Series will be at the New Hampshire Motor Speedway this upcoming weekend. And with that, we're going to take a break. And we come back, we'll do some more chatting and some more talking about what's going on in racing when we come back. Hey, hey what's up? Oh, I said I was going to say what's up for some reason. Hey, hey, we're set it up, and you're watching the Enradio TV Network.
Village Music Shop of Master. 1 800 Hey Dude, your full service store with personalized attention, school band instrument rentals and sales, music instruction on all instruments for all styles and age groups, for guitars, drums, amplifiers, PA systems, and accessories. It's Village Music Shop, 1495 Montauk Highway in Mastic. Call 1 800 Hey Dude or go to villagemusicshop.com. Hi there, this is Buddy from Less Than Jake, and you are listening to In Radio TV. You're probably watching it too. Hey, welcome back. <laughs> welcome back. You can't be sleeping there. Uh, yes. You know, I, I, I've been in this racing business 42 years as a crew guy, a driver, owner, official, even promoted a race or two along the way, sponsor. I've done just about everything there is to do in, in auto racing except own a racetrack and who knows. But over the years, as I said earlier, the friendships that you make at racetracks are incredible. And for those who aren't in that circle, let's say, find it hard to understand that. They find it hard to understand why would XYZ company want to put money into some guy who's running at some local racetrack. They can't understand how a driver will miss a family wedding <laughs> or a Saturday afternoon barbecue to go race them. It's in our blood. It's what we do. And, and I always equate that to the to friends of mine who, they go hunting every year. And you know when they go hunting? Thanksgiving weekend. You know why? Because their father did that. And his father before him. And they do Thanksgiving dinner the following week. Because that's what they do. Guys that have boats. The boating series season on Long Island is, is very short. So what are you going to do every weekend? You're going to go out on your boat unless there's a storm. And even then you're like, well, well maybe we could, you know, because that's what they do. We go racing. And a lot of people say, you know, racing is a very dangerous sport and, and things could happen. Yeah, we had this situation, Ted Christopher, we were just talking about a bunch of friends of mine. We were just talking about the guy who's run thousands of races in his 29 year career. Tens of thousands of laps. He was fine. Was he ever injured? Absolutely. Absolutely. He finished the race with a broken wrist not too long ago. He, he died going to a race. And, and he was so passionate about his race that he, he flew, whether he flew in a, in a two passenger plane or he flew in a helicopter, he flew to the races. Because that's what he did. And I can remember a time I was working staff at it many years ago as the race director, and it was a Friday night tour show. And I needed to be at Lime Rock Saturday morning for a K&M Pro Series East race to work in the TV trailer, looking at 10 cameras so I could report what was going on on the racetrack to the tower. And I asked some of the officials, you know how to get to Lime Rock? And they laughed that you can't get there from here. But you know who can give you direct, distinct, perfect directions? Ted Criswell. So I go over to Ted, he said, Ted, I, 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 can I ask you a question? He goes, yeah. I says, how do you get to Lime Rock from here? He starts laughing. Because you can't get there from here. No, really, I, they said you would know. He goes, OK. Now, Stafford Motor Speedway is in Stafford, Stafford Springs, Connecticut, the northern, almost central part. Lime Rock is at the far west end of Connecticut, up in the northwest of there, part of Connecticut. So if you look at a rectangle, it's the upper left corner. He said, oh, you got two ways. You can go all the way south, take 84 to like Route 7 or 8 and shoot north. Or you can go all the way up, take the mass pike, shoot across that way and come down. There's no way to get, well, there's back roads, but it's 30 miles an hour. There's a covered bridge, there's this. And, and if you want to go that way, you can, but I don't recommend it. Well, we end up at the racetrack and, and, uh, and Ted happens to be there and, and says, oh, I see you made it. I said, well, if I knew you were coming, I would have just followed you and drove with it. And he goes, now he goes, I, I, after the race, we go get ice cream. 
because that's what he did after the ice cream. Some of us go have a few beers. Some of us go have a couple of drinks. Teddy and his guys, they go get ice cream. And I'll be getting ice cream tonight after the show in honor of Ted Christopher. Believe what I tell you. And, you know, look at it, like they said, the, the Ted Christopher things and, the, and the, some of the stuff that, that he did and he didn't do. And, and, I, and I can remember seeing him being, he was suspended for a week at, at Stafford the week prior. Now his suspension is served. We're at a tour race. And the guy that he got into it with, whether it was for fighting, screaming and yelling, pushing each other, or wrecking each other, I'm not sure what this one was for. <laughs> but but what, he, what he did to that guy, he says, hey, how'd you do last week? I wasn't here. I missed it. <laughs> to the guy, he just had to, and the guy looks at him like he's crazy. And Ted would just start laughing, because that's what's Teddy. I don't think he ever, from what I saw, ever held a grudge against anybody. I never heard him give a bad word about anybody on the races. And like Phil Kerr's and Wheel Engineering said, you know, Teddy was with Whalen for a long time before it was the Whelan Modified Tour. And, and Phil Kerr's, he's, he's not just a, a title guy that signs the checks or gives the approval in the board meeting. Phil Kerr's is down in the trenches with the Modified Series. He's down in the trenches with the people in charge of the Modified Series. He's in the trenches with the people in the Big Ivory Castle down south fighting for the Modified Series. And, and I'll tell you what, and, and when I was you know, heavily involved in the Modifieds and, and was privy to some of the private stuff that went on, Phil Kerr's was u unique in a way that he really cared. I can remember him fighting for TV coverage. I can remember him fighting for more tracks and different venues. I, I can remember these conversations that he would have to, to try to get coverage and help for his guys, his guys that are on the, on the, in the cars making it happen. And, you know, and, and he's, he's hard to miss. The guy's got to be like 6'6", six, six, always with a smile, always with a smile. And him and Ted together, watching those guys talk together, you don't, they're not talking, they're just laughing back and forth because that's what Teddy was like. See, I got to see that part of Teddy. I got to see that part of Teddy. When, when Teddy used to drive for Eddie Whelan in the 36 car, they always had the furthest pit spot from the, from the NASCAR hall, and, and I spent a lot of time down there because, you know, believe it or not, on the, on the Modified Series, some of these teams have cooks that cook their breakfast, their lunch, and their dinner. And, I was always invited in to, to eat at their trailer. And if I didn't have time, somebody from that team would bring me something to eat. And, and that's how I really got to know Teddy. Now, I saw a whole part of Teddy that nobody else saw, that nobody else saw, because he would became my friend. And, and you know, I, I always, some people say, oh, you're going to miss him. No, I'm not going to miss Teddy. Teddy's in my heart. He'll always be there, always. And I have tons and tons of pictures of, of, of Teddy racing. Teddy and I, Atlantic City, there was a picture early before. That was taken this past January at the indoor races in Atlantic City. Anytime he was racing I was around, we always would try to hook up, get together, share a joke, share a laugh, you know? And, but there's this one thing that he said to me one day. The cars pulled out on in the mini mile, of, as they call it, at the Stafford Motor Speedway for driver intros in the tour. And, and it came and driving the 13, you know, from Plainville, Connecticut, Ted Christopher, and, and the place erupted in booze. Now, it's not like his name was Lou, and it was a Lou, Lou. No, it was booze, a resounding boo. And he kept that smile, and he waved, and he jumped off his car, and he's stopping, and he goes, Joe, why did they boo me, man? I put on a good show. I said, Teddy, nobody likes the good guy. Nobody likes the guy that's winning all the time. You're the bad guy. And you know, you could be a foot away from somebody and they can get a right rear blowout and spin out. You did it. They'll be booing you, you did it. Because they have to find a villain. And you know what? If that's what they had to do, a villain is good for our sport. So you gotta have somebody that you don't like. You have to have somebody that you can boo and cheer against. You have to have somebody to blame when your car didn't have a good night. Teddy was that guy, and you know what, the good Lord knew that Teddy could take it. He put that weight on his shoulders and, he's, and, and he whispered in his ear and said, Ted, just do it. It's good for the sport. And it was good for the sport. 
22 figure eight set many, many, many shows ago. That's what's missing from our sport. There's no villains. There's no villains. I can remember as a kid there were villains. I can remember bounties. An extra 500 bucks if you beat Jerry Cook or Richie Evans or whoever. That's what, that it was so different then. It was so different then. And you know, and, and I, I watched Ted when he ran a couple of cup races, and, and particularly twice at New Hampshire Motor Speedway. And uh, he didn't have the same equipment as everybody else, trust me. And, and whether or not he was a field filler or not, I'll never know. But you know what? He was there. He, he was on the starting grid. When the green flag dropped, he went racing. And he pulled out, you know, pulled off the track later on in the race, early on. Um, there was a couple of times I saw him, whether it was a vibration or, or handling, whatever the reason out was. But you know what? He, he got out and he was smiling. Like I said, I've, I never saw him yelling at people, other than when, and I didn't see it, so I'm still speaking that when he smacked Roman Panic a couple of weeks ago, and I, I shouldn't be laughing at that. But that was, that's raw emotion. That's raw emotion. And, you know, think about this. Now think about this. You take your, your street car, you just went to the dealership, bought a brand new car, spent, oh, 30, 40,000. And you're driving down the highway, you stop the light, and somebody crashes into you. What, are you going to get out and say, oh, are you okay? You're going to be flipping out because they just wrecked your car. It's no different in racing, folks. <laughs> if somebody wrecks your car, you're not going to get out and say, oh, are you, are you okay? You're not. You're not. Maybe later, maybe later when it's all sorted out. You know, so you have an accident on the highway, have an accident on the racetrack, it's the same. It's a passion. Going for a win, oh my gosh, forget about it. You, you, you have a win in hand, and, and you know, I used to say counting the money. We don't count the money anymore because the payoffs are horrible. But you know, you're sitting, oh, I got another one, I got another one, bam! And all of a sudden, the field goes whizzing by you. But you know, that, that was Teddy, that was Teddy. And, and I, like I said, I always had fun with him, always. And you know, if you go into the social media and you read some of the stories, because everybody's posting their Teddy stories. Everybody's posting their Teddy stories, and you know, they're good stories. They are good stories, and, and, and I enjoy reading them. I, I spent a lot of my time over the last couple of days just reading the stories about Ted Christopher. You know, he didn't have any children. Uh, he was married. Um, and, and his, I, I remember meeting his wife at the racetrack, and uh, a nice lady. He was in the process of building a new house. And uh, I don't know if he was going to retire from racing or not, because race car drivers don't really ever retire they just sometimes put their stuff away and wait until their situation changes or they're waiting for a better ride. I know guys that retire from racing and you know, say they're married, they want to raise a family and build a home and, and, and they did all that and then they're going to have children and hopefully their sons maybe would get into racing and they give their kid the car to go racing. And then there's some guys out there that you know, had old girls. You know, 22 figure, right? And uh, <laughs> not that girls can't race, you know, but it's, it's different. It's totally different. And it's just one of those things that uh, I don't know if Teddy would have ever retired. I think he would have just stopped racing four or five times a week. Anyway, when we come back, we'll talk about Chicagoland and what went on there when we come back. Hi, I'm Remington. I'm Emerson. And I'm Sebastian. We're Palais Royale, and you're watching in Radio TV. There we go. 
The world of advertising has changed. Radio, TV, and newspaper revenues have declined drastically. Why? Because businesses have realized that advertising return on investment isn't what it used to be. So what can we do about it? Well, that's easy. Advertise online. Own a local restaurant, real estate agency, or even a national retail chain? Whatever your business, in Radio can get your message out there. And we can do it at a fraction of the cost. Call today and see the difference for yourself. This isn't TV. This isn't radio. This is in Ravio.com. Hey, this is Chris Lester Jake, and if in Ravio.com spots you at an event wearing this bracelet, they will give you $100. Village Music Shop of Master. 1 800 Hey Dude. Your full service store with personalized attention. School band instrument rentals and sales. Music instruction on all instruments for all styles and age groups. For guitars, drums, amplifiers, PA systems, and accessories. It's Village Music Shop. 1495 Montauk Highway in Mastic. Call 1 800 Hey Dude or go to villagemusicshop.com. Hi, this is Mike Jarecki from My Race News, and you're watching the Enravio TV Network. Hey, welcome back. Anyway, Chicagoland was first uh, stop for the Cup Series um, on their playoffs, but the Camper World Truck Series was there this weekend as well. And uh, Johnny Sorta was the winner there, followed by Chase Briscoe in second, Christopher Bell third, Ryan Truex from the pole was fourth, Grant Enfinger was fifth, Ben Rhodes sixth, followed by John Hunter Nemechek in seventh, Noel Gregson was eighth, Kaz Grela ninth, and Matt Myatt Snyder was tenth. The points for their chiefs, for their playoff, I should say, right now, the top eight. Going to their playoffs, Christopher Bell is the leader, followed by Johnny Sorter, John Hunk at the Nemechek, Matt Crafton, Chase Briscoe, Austin Sindrick, Ben Rose, and Kaz Grella. The Xfinity Series was there as well. Uh, Justin Algaia was the winner, followed by Kyle Larson. Elliot Sadler was third, Daniel Hemrick fourth, Austin Dillon fifth, Matt Tift was sixth, Cole Custer seventh, Ty Dillon was eighth, Ray Koch Ninth, Darrell Wallace Jr. rounding out the top 10. Eric Jones was the pole sitter for the event. He finished 18th uh, on the lead lap. They'll be headed to Kentucky uh, this coming weekend. Uh, the points there, William Byron is the point leader, followed by Justin Algaia, Elliot Sadler, third, Daniel Hemrick, fourth in the points, Brennan Poole, fifth, Ryan Reed, sixth, Jeremy Clemens, seventh, Cole Custer is eighth, Blake Koch, ninth, Matt Tift, tenth, Brendan Gorn, 11th, and Michael Annette, 12th. And those are the 12 drivers that'll be in that playoff run. So we'll keep you posted on that goes. Now the Monster Energy NASCAR Cup was also the highlighted show at the Chicagoland Speedway. Martin Truex took down the win there, followed by Chase Elliott. Kevin Harvick was third, Denny Hamlin fourth, Kyle Larson fifth, Brad Keselowski sixth, Joey Logano seventh, Jimmy Johnson was eighth. Matt Kenseth, ninth. Jamie McMurray, 10th. Kyle Busch took the pole there, and he was 15th, one lap down. Their playoff system is 16 drivers uh, right now in the playoffs. Martin Truex Jr., of course, with that win, is the leader and guaranteed a spot into the next, next round. Kyle Larson, second. Kevin Harvick, third. Brad Keselowski, fourth. Kyle Busch, fifth. Chase Elliott, sixth. Denny Hamlin, seventh. We have Jimmy Johnson, 8th, Kenseth, 9th, Ryan Blaney, 10th, Jamie McMurray, 11th, Austin Dillon, 12th, Kurt Busch, 13th, Ricky Stenthouse, Jr., 14th, Casey Kane, 15th, and Ryan Newman rounding out the top 16 of all the playoff contenders. Martin Truex, out of New Jersey, had a nice tribute on uh, NBC Sports following the victory. Uh, nice tribute to TC, Ted Christopher, Martin Truex, Said he grew up watching Ted Christopher race the Modifieds and when he ran down at Wall, uh, Speedway down in southern New Jersey. He raced with Ted Christopher and he had nothing but praise for the man who lost his life on his way to do what he loved doing and that was a race, race cars. And I'll tell you what is, you know, Truex is facing some of his own demons right now and health-wise with his, his girlfriend is fighting cancer. And... Um, you know, if we've all been touched by that in some way, 
We've all been touched by somebody who's had cancer, who's suffering through cancer. Uh, we all know somebody, and, and to watch them go through that, and sometimes we could cure them and make them all better, and you'll never know it. Sometimes we could stop it, get rid of it, and make them all better for now. And sometimes we have to just sit back and let the good Lord do what he has to do. So, but, you know, Truex just wins a, a race. His girlfriend's side by side with him, all, all emotional. And he still took time out to pay tribute to his, his friend, Ted Christopher. Because that's what this business is about. That's what it's about. And speaking of the business end, uh, Richard Petty Motorsports lost its longtime sponsor, Smithfield Bacon, or Smithfield Foods, I should say, as they are going over to Stuart Haas Racing. Also means that uh, Eric Almarola will be vacating the 43 as well and going to where the money is at Stuart Haas Racing. Now, there was some talk that Dow Wallace Jr. was going to drive the 43, and that's why Smithfield Foods pulled out. And then it became a racist thing. Why does everything have to be a racist thing? It had nothing to do with that. It was business. It was business. You know, Joe Blow could have been going in that car. That deal was already made. You know, Richard Petty is all upset, 80 years old, going on. He'll be 81 next season. Richard Petty was all upset because he's a gentleman, and it is his mind, his feeling that back in February, when they had that good run and, I, and a win at Daytona, they shook hands, and Richard Petty, in, in, in his book, that's better and bigger than any contract. So Richard Petty's sitting back. He's got it good. 2018's good. Smithfield's coming back. It's all good. And then they make that announcement. And, and the man was not angry by that. He was hurt. He's a southern gentleman. He's old school. You know, if you ever watched the, the, the show The Jersey Boys about the Four Seasons, you know, Frankie Valli ran his whole career or what he called a Jersey contract, and that's a handshake. Except in Jersey, when you break the contract, you end up in, <laughs> in some swamp somewhere. But Richard Petty's not like that. But you know, I, I, I just find it amazing, and yet at the same time, I don't. Because it's always been said, and I remember the late Bob O'Rourke, the, 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 the big racing guru of Long Island and, and other parts as well, you know, talking after the race is sitting back and have a nice adult beverage saying, Richard Petty does not pay a lot. He doesn't pay a lot of money. And, and then some guys use Richard Petty as a stepping stone. So you're never going to get a, a, a top star traction driver to drive Richard Petty because he can't, not that he can't afford them. I don't want to say that because I said that to somebody. You want to work for him? I said, you can't afford me. And he goes, I can afford you. It's what I choose to pay you. And, and, I, and I guess he was right. He took care of his drivers. He treated them like family. But pay-wise, he's probably the lowest paid team in the charter when it comes to paying his drivers. So here's Eric Almoral. He's got you know, limited success in, in, in Richard Petty Motorsports. And he has a chance to go where Danica Patrick isn't going to be anymore. And, and in his mind, he's like, yeah, this is where I need to go. This is what I need to do. I've got to do what's right for my family. So that's what he's doing. So now Bubba Wallace comes along, and, and he did OK with Richard Petty's cars, considering the circumstances that he just hopped right in to a team that he didn't know or a spotter he never dealt with. But he, but he made it good. He, he, he did the best he could under the circumstances. And, and I'm telling you what, giving a full-time shot in, in Richard Petty Motorsports equipment with a couple of decent sponsors, I think Bubba Wallace will, will grow. and. Richard Petty Motorsports will be a top 10 team again. Now, I only hope that if that does happen, that Bubba Wallace doesn't decide, hey, you know what? This team is asking me to come for more money. This team, and I know it's about money, but how much money is too much? I, I, if you want to pay me you know, a million dollars to do 505 on, I'm going to do it. But let me tell you something. I'm going to tell you this right now because I'm a loyal friend and I'm, and I'm a loyal person. If XYZ.com had a racing show called Bumper to Bumper and wanted to pay me a million and a half, I'd still be sitting right here, trust me. Trust me, because that's how I am. You make a commitment, you shake hands, and it's a good deal, it's done. 
And, and that's what I'm starting to not like about racing on the top level. And, and I was looking at social media and they were talking about some of the mistake NASCAR's made and, and over the last couple of years and what's going on and how the sport's falling apart. And you know, and I, I don't normally get involved with political stuff on social media. I mean, I, I use social media for fun. I write a lot of cryptic stuff on it. And if you can read between the lines, you'll understand. But when you, when, when you look at what's happening in NASCAR, if it was any other corporation in America, CEO, you're not making it happen. Keep it moving. We'll send you your personal stuff. But what's happened is NASCAR slash International Speedway Corp is basically the same people on the board of directors. So they're not going to fire <laughs> Brian France. They're not going to do that. You know, and when the board sits down, there's so many France people on the board, whether it's a, a husband or a wife or somebody, they don't have enough shares to vote that, that guy out. I've always said this, I'm going to say it again. If you're going to run a racing team, if you're going to run a racetrack, if you're going to run NASCAR, the biggest sanctioning body in the world when it comes to racing, a Fortune 500 company, if you're going to run it, as the late great Walt Detzel said, if you don't have grease under your fingernails, you don't belong there. I'm not saying you can't wash it, but you had to, have, you had to grow up greasing your fingernails. You had to grow up in the trenches. And that was one of the things that the, the, the company that I spent 25 years with, you didn't just walk in and become the boss. The CEO of UPS started out loading trailers at 3 o'clock in the morning, just like we all did. Some of us moved up the ranks quick, some a little quicker, some were happy with loading trailers at 3 o'clock in the morning, and that's okay. We all do what we have to do. But when you're running a business that affects thousands, tens of thousands of other people, you need to do it right, and you need to sit back and take a look and listen to the people who've been in the trenches. Listen to the people who have been there, done that, got many t-shirts. We'll be right back so we can wrap up. Hey guys, this is Jibs from Ocean's 8 Alaska and you're watching In Radio TV Network. Hey, I'm, I'm Raul Panther. And I'm Commander B. Hawkins. And I'm Mark Weller. We're uh, some of the Proto Men. If we see you without this bracelet, we're going to punch in the d But if you have this bracelet from InRadio.com, you can win 100 bucks. Put one of these on or else. What's up guys, this is Assuming We Survive and you're watching in Radio TV Network. Welcome back. Here's some uh, little things I want to just catch up on. Um, the 82 car owned by Danny Watts, the Teddy Christopher, the late Teddy Christopher, that's going to be hard to say. Uh, for the remainder of the, the season, at least at the New Hampshire Motor Speedway, Woody Pitcat will be in the 82 at New Hampshire. And uh, it's going to be bittersweet for Danny Watts and his team. Woody Pitcat is a, is, is a darn good driver. And Woody actually posted a, a little story on social media that he needed to get to a race 
and he hopped in the helicopter with Teddy to get there. He said, come on, I'll get you there. So Woody Pitt got to be in a good shoe. Why Woody Pitcat is not at a full-time ride in the NASCAR Wheeler Modified Tour is beyond recognition to me. But uh, that's, that's what he'll be doing. Um, I don't want to run out of time, but before I do run out of time, there's some people I want to thank about today. And today was tough. It started on my way home from the racetrack on Saturday night. And... Uh, Yesterday was tougher, the toughest, I thought, because I was trying to put stuff together, trying to see what I could do and what was I going to say. And I you know, was up half the night and I woke up and today was worse because I got to come do this. And um, there was a couple of things that I thought about. I was like, you know what? I don't think people will be too upset if I, I miss this week. Well, I'm, I'm recuperating from major surgery here. I'd be, you know, I'd come down the stairs in a way I'm not even going to explain. And then I thought about my friend TC. And I can remember him pulling in, because his car was, he was involved in a little skirmish on the racetrack, and the car wasn't right. They fixed it. And most drivers would have just rode around. Ted Christopher, not only did he get back on the lead lap after three laps down, he won the race. So if Teddy could do it under such harsh circumstances, if I didn't, I'd go to sleep tonight and he'd be in my dreams yelling at me in that Teddy way. So first I want to thank Teddy for treating me the way he did as a friend knowing that, hey, the show goes on, the job still has to get done. I also want to thank the Reverend Don Rivers for his prayers and, and help today. Uh, it's the same with Pastor Scott Craniac, uh, both with the Racing with Jesus Ministries, who, who gave us that little tribute in the beginning. Um, good people. Phil Kerr's Whaling Engineering for his kind words and his little tribute to Teddy. Uh, Mike Jarecki for his words to me in the message he sent right before the show. John Visconti, who has become my friend, and I don't say that too easily, he's become my friend, good friend, who was back and forth with me today um, through, through messages and whatnot, to give me that encouragement that, you know, as he said, you could do this. Jimmy Rennick, the same thing. Guy came out of nowhere. He's in that circle. I want to thank him. Shane Ryan, who back and forth, him and I were back and forth together for the last two, two days talking about this. I believe Kwanzaa for putting together that video mo montage for us. Uh, Bonnie and Chuck Schultz of Ultimate Media, who I was back and forth with all day, driving them nuts with what I wanted, how I wanted it, what I wanted. I normally don't do that. I'll say, hey, can we get this? Yeah, yeah. But today, I guess my words are, I want this. <laughs> and I get here, and it's all done. Anthony, my control room guy, scrambling to put it all together, because it all fell on him. <laughs> it all fell on him. Um, and, and all my other friends and family, and especially um, Mary. I wasn't, <laughs> I wasn't an easy person to live with the last couple of days. Because <laughs> I lost my buddy. But she understood. And um, everybody should have a person like that. So here we are. Here we are, coming to a wrap up of, I'm going to say, the hardest show I ever did. Harder than Walter, who I still talk to. And the first tragic show I ever did was Little Jay Trinka who was killed on his way to a go-kart race in an automobile accident. That was a hard one, too. But I wasn't close to Jay Trink. I didn't know him, but it was still it hit home. I thought, what if that was my kid? I'm at the racetrack waiting to go racing, and they're never, gonna, they never show up. Walter was sick. I expected his passing. I didn't want him to suffer. But when the reality hit, I, I didn't see his name anymore in the chat room. 
and 22 figure eight always ends it with God bless WJ. And when 22 figure eight can't do it because he's at work or whatever, I do it for him. A lot of people, a lot of people made this happen. And my son Brian today sent me a message. Usually he's sarcastic. He's got 20 years overseas. He did some tough stuff over in Afghanistan. But we always joke about stuff and he says to me, listen, you're not gonna feel the hand of the Lord on your shoulder during this show, it's gonna be Teddy. Teddy was here, and like I posted in social media before, he came here, albeit spiritually, to watch this show, to sit me up straight when I started to go down, to pat me on the back when I got a little crazy, like just now. And I bet you because he was here, he missed the driver's meeting at Heaven's Motor Speedway. You know what that means, you start last. But that's okay, because Teddy's gonna start last tonight at Heaven Motor Speedway. And it's gonna be one hell of a race, watching him come back from the back and win it. And Charlie, Richie, Tom, John Boy, there's a new rookie in heaven. It's Ted Christopher. <laughs> so, say a little prayer for Teddy and his family. I've said a lot of them. And those of you going to New Hampshire this weekend for the Modifieds, or wherever else your endeavors are going to take you, be safe, be careful. Give somebody a hug. Tell them you love them. God bless you all. We'll see you next week.